All right, so this is the quick and dirty version of Leon theory. Uh, Leon theory is the theory that Elliot's third personality is actually Leon. It's someone that we have already met, and it's someone that we already know. Uh, now, most viewers will say it's impossible for Leon and Elliot to be the same person, and this theory doesn't make sense. Uh, a lot of times they point to Mobley and Trenton being kidnapped by Leon in Arizona, and Elliot was in New York at the time. So how could it be possible that Elliot and Leon are the same person? Let's just say that this theory is going to take a leap of faith. Uh, we've already seen on the show, Elliot is an unreliable narrator. We know that season four is supposed to be a pretty big mind blower, according to the creator, Sam Esmail. So it could be possible that what you've seen on the show is not an accurate interpretation of the actual events that took place. So the question remains, how could it be possible that Leon and Elliot are the same person? Let's first answer the question of what qualities Elliot's third personality would have to have. We already know Mr. Robot only exists in Elliot's head, so it would stand to reason his third personality would share some of the same things in common, like the ability to seamlessly jump back and forth effortlessly and unnoticed between his personalities, even when speaking to others. Elliot and Mr. Robot are also able to speak privately to each other, even when there are other people in the room. We are first introduced to Leon as Elliot's new daily prison companion. They attend meals and basketball games together, and usually Elliot listens to Leon talk about his favorite sitcoms. When Elliot gets called slow at a basketball game, Leon stands up for him, gets in the other prisoner's face, and he doesn't back down until the warden comes and breaks it up and sits down and talks to Elliot. If Leon is truly an alternate personality of Elliot's, then he must be able to seamlessly transition to and from Leon the same way he is able to do with Mr. Robot. In a couple of scenes where Elliot and Leon are having meals, Mr. Robot joins them at the table. Leon never interrupts them or talks about TV when the three of them are sitting down together. He lets them have their own conversation. In 204, Leon asks about the chessboard, which Elliot replies, it's not for you. We later see Elliot playing Mr. Robot in a game of chess that always results in a stalemate. Leon asks Elliot what his motivations are and if he dreams. Leon is helping Elliot make sense of his situation, much like Mr. Robot tends to do. In 209, we see a flashback of Leon and Elliot walking out to the prison yard together. This is another example of Elliot talking to himself, or rather providing exposition to the audience through Leon, another similarity to Mr. Robot. And that scene where Angela and Elliot are greeted in his apartment by Leon, that's just another example of Elliot's multiple personalities seamlessly interacting with the same person at the same time. In 207, when Elliot is jumped by skinheads, Leon takes over and kills his attackers, acting in Elliot's best interest like Mr. Robot has done several times. This scene is crucial to Leon theory because we are led to believe that the Nazis are talking about Leon sitting next to him when they are in fact talking about Ray. Remember, they attacked Elliot over losing their Bitcoin wallets when Ray's Darknet market got closed down by the FBI via Elliot. Prior to the attack, we see Elliot and Leon again switch seamlessly between each other during the initial confrontation. We initially see the attack happen from Elliot's perspective, only to then see Leon slice his way through the attackers, rescuing Elliot. For Leon theory to be true, we would have to accept that Leon is a failsafe mode that Elliot can activate in dire life or death situations, or that can be automatically activated within Elliot under certain circumstances. Maybe Leon is a chip implanted in Elliot's head by the Dark Army that turns him into a Terminator-style killing machine. For this to be true, Elliot would have had to undergo some sort of extensive combat training, like an FBI agent might. In fact, Elliot's actions are often lawful. He frequently turns in criminals to the FBI. He's highly disciplined, physically fit, intelligent, organized, a natural leader, highly motivated and focused. These are all characteristics of a highly trained security officer of some sort. As of the time this video is being made, we are only five episodes into the season four, so we don't actually know who Elliot's third personality is yet. Elliot could be some sort of Jason Bourne-style spy character, for all we know. The word Leon could even be a codename for lethal engagement or law enforcement on. L-E-ON. Sounds like the name of a safety protocol someone like Elliot would write for himself in his perfectly constructed personality program routine. So how did the Dark Army put this chip inside Elliot's head, and how do they control him? Enter Irving. Irving comes to visit Leon in prison. He asks about Alderson and hears Leon's story about killing the Nazis. 
As Leon's handler, he's just checking in on his boy. But Irving also has the power to turn Elliot into Leon whenever he wants. Elliot doesn't meet Irving until he scoops up him and Darlene after the capture of the flag tourney at the Hacker Club when Elliot closes the back door to the Dark Army for Phase 2. Irving accepts Elliot's resignation from Phase 2 and sends him on his way at the Red Wheelbarrow restaurant. The first time Mr. Robot meets Irving is on the night of the hack. He shows up to the arcade with his goons and intercepts Mr. Robot and Tyrell moments after the attack goes live. Irving tells Mr. Robot to take Tyrell's car and park it in the lot and put some money on the dashboard. What happens between parking the car and Elliot waking up three days later is still a mystery. Perhaps this time was used to install Leon and Elliot, or rather, maybe Mr. Robot. For Leon theory to be possible, we must accept that Irving is Leon's handler, amongst other duties, and that he can activate Leon mode in Elliot as needed for Dark Army purposes. Also, we must accept that Elliot is compromised by the Dark Army, and he is unwittingly a deadly assassin under their control. The best example of this would be the Barn Showdown in Episode 310. Irving brings Elliot to the party, and he leaves to sort out the FBI guy situation. He asks Leon if he's got this. Leon says he's good. When Dom comes back from her initiation, only Elliot can hear Leon talking. Mr. Robot even suggests Elliot activate Leon to help them escape inside the barn before the showdown with Grant. But Elliot knows his only true chance of survival is to kill Grant and finish the Congo project for White Rose. Once Grant arrives and Irving leaves for vacation, Elliot convinces White Rose to let him handle the Congo project. She agrees, and Leon is activated to shoot the Dark Army soldiers holding Darlene hostage, forcing Grant to take his own life as required by Dark Army protocol. So we've established that Leon and Mr. Robot share many similarities, and that it's possible that Elliot has the skills to fight like Leon, and that the Dark Army possesses the ability to control Elliot via Leon. Stay with me. So now the last big question remains, the one that most people point to and say there is no way it can be Leon because of this. What about Mobley and Trenton in Arizona? The after credit scene from the season two finale plays out like this. Just look at what I found. Excuse me. Oh, sorry, dude, we're on a break. Yeah, I just had a quick question. Do you have the time? The recap of that scene before episode 307 simply shows Leon interrupting their conversation and Mobley looking to the side. Mobley never says that line about being on a break. Perhaps that's what really happened, but we didn't get to see it like that the first time. After Leon kills their roommate, who, by the way, is another F Society foot soldier, he sits on their couch and talks about Knight Rider. At one point, Mobley begs Leon not to hurt them and offers to help him. Why would they want to help a cold-blooded killer that they just met? In fact, why would Mobley and Trenton bring a complete stranger into their homes? Isn't it more plausible they recognize Elliot's face and thought he was there to help them somehow at first? This suggests familiarity with the person Mobley is talking to. Later, Trenton refers to him as a psycho in the back of the car while trying to break out of her bike lock cuffs. She knows Elliot is crazy, but she never knew he was capable of murder. And when she says the email is set up to go to a friend that she can trust, she hesitates a bit seemingly knowing that that friend is Elliot, and he may be the one ultimately responsible for her demise. But she and Mobley are aware that Elliot has the ability to go back and forth between various personalities, and likely assume they're not dealing with Elliot in this situation. When Leon returns the pair to their apartment unharmed, Trenton seems worried that he is leaving them with Grant. Almost like she would rather stay with someone she knows and trusts, even if he is a complete psycho. After all, he just brought them home from not killing them in the middle of the desert. Okay, maybe, right? But how did Elliot slash Leon get to Arizona in the first place when he was in New York when the attack went down? Well, after Elliot sees the TV report of the attack, he goes to Chris's office, transforms into Mr. Robot, and then runs out to confront our old pal Irving at his used car dealership. Not long after that, he gets knocked out by Dark Army goons. The next time we see Irving and Mr. Robot together, they are at a party in New York City. Irving goes inside to take care of business and leaves Mr. Robot outside by himself. There is lost time here. The party looks to be taking place at around dusk. The attacks happen sometime around noon. So what did Irving really do with Mr. Robot all day? For this theory to work, you must accept that Irving knocked out Mr. Robot, activated Leon, 
put him on a private jet to Arizona, where his job was probably to hand over Mobley and Trenton to the Dark Army. The roommate just happened to get in the way. Then he jumped back on a jet, flew back to New York, and woke up in Irving's car just as they arrived at the party. Okay, if it's not a jet, maybe it's some sort of sci-fi time travel or teleportation or teleportation thing that White Rose has been developing, use your imagination. All of these things are par for the course for this show at this point. Want me to put a bow on it? Here is a not-so-subtle artistic clue from the creators that Leon exists inside Elliot's mind, literally. He is literally taking a seat inside Elliot's mind. Notice the phone that is so prominent and obvious in the shot of Leon on Elliot's couch? This could be a simple suggestion that this conversation is happening electronically. The song playing in the garage when Mr. Robot gets knocked out? Take a listen to the lyrics. I can make you dance. All of these things, ladies and gentlemen, point to one thing and one thing only. Elliot is Leon confirmed. Thanks for watching. I'm working on a few more videos about Mr. Robot, Elliot, and a few other theories. So if you'd like to see more, please comment, like, subscribe. And uh, if you think there's anything I missed, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.